Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World for episode 1 of Ischia Farms. Now, if you've been paying attention, watching other episodes, you will know that I have been called away to Italy. The land of Michelangelo, the Sistine Chapel, the Colosseum, and many other wonders of the world. Also, the place that invented ice cream, the battery, eyeglasses, and everyone's favorite, pizza. Mm-hmm. So... As the story goes, I was contacted in Scotland on Dalton Valley Farm by a couple from the Netherlands. And you say, the Netherlands, what are you doing in Italy? Well, they're an older couple. They're retired, and they wanted to retire to Italy. They came down here, and their dream, their bucket list, whatever you want to call it, was to start a winery. But, that's a steep hill. I'm not going down there. <laughs> they don't know what, they, they have no experience in agriculture, you know, and they're very well, well to do. So, they kind of started throwing money at the problem. And, I mean, they've got a nice setup here, but... They're in the hole, deep in the hole, and they have called me in to try to get their, their uh, agriculture in order, to try to get their vineyards going, and see if they can't in some way make a working winery. But the problem now is they are a million and a half dollars in debt. At least this operation as a business owes the bank two and a half million dollars so somehow we need to create a working farm pay off that loan and make it productive and hopefully with a little bit of luck make it profitable now they've given me a hundred thousand dollars to work with but I'm going to show you exactly what kind of money they've been throwing at this problem. We've got two different storage areas just packed with equipment. Look at this. Got trailers stuck in here. We've got a power harrow, I think. Now these are grape planters or seedling planters, but they're specifically designed for Things like grapes and almonds. This big Amazon spreader. Interesting. And they do have some pallets of uh, white and red grape saplings here. So at least we have something to plant. That's a good start. And they do have some silos set up for fertilizer. It looks like seed and lime. So that's good. That, that puts us in good shape. And we come down here to the other end. What do we got in here? More equipment. Have a few tractors. We've got an old Fiat. We've got a Frutetto. Interesting. A couple of grape harvesters. We've got a regular planter cedar. Regular cedar, I think that is. And this is nice. This will be helpful. This big New Holland um, harvester. And we've got another Deutz Far tractor. So we have no shortage in the tractor department because, well, as you know, the Fent goes everywhere with me. And we do have my tent, Fent, or, or my tent, my Fent 1050 to use also. We've got the big harvester header. It's probably the only good place they could put it. And we do have a telehandler. So, good way to start. We do have a silo to uh, store our proceeds, if you will. And then they bought a couple of fields. And there's not much in them. I mean, they are. They're loaded. Um... 
and those are going to need to get stripped out first. We need to we need to harvest those. There's one of them is definitely ready to harvest. And then this is the care, what the farm manager's house, I guess you should say. So this is where they've given me to live. So not a bad little place. Not bad at all. I've been comfortable in here. And best of all, they gave me a truck. A personal vehicle. So, I mean, it's not my truck. It's part of the farm, but... It will stay here. But we're going to go take a look at the fields. Now, one thing that's interesting here... Is... This appears to be an olive grove, but these trees have just been been let go. And so we might try to get that working for us too. That could help out. Olives are a big business in Italy. If you know anything about Italy, um, olives and olive oil are an important agricultural product or imp are important agricultural products and um, that might just benefit us. So, this first field, we don't really need a truck to get to, but we will. Our first field is field 26, right here on the left. And they've got this loaded up with sorghum. Interesting crop. It's a good big field. It's, uh, what, 10 and a half acres. But we're going to need to get this harvested, and it's ready to harvest. It wasn't well tended. Whoever planted it didn't take good care of it. So it's only partially been fertilized, things like that. But that's going to be one of our first jobs is to get that harvested. And then we're going to run over to our next field just north of this one. Kind of cruise through the village a little bit. Just take a slight look around. This is a pretty little town, coastal town, and let's see, that's still our sorghum field. I think if I cut up this hill right here, yeah, so this is our other field, right here, and we've got protein peas growing in this field. This is another field that's about ten and a half acres, so... Um, when these are ready, when these are ready, and it looks like they're probably not too far from being ready, we'll need to get those harvested too. And once we do, we're going to look at getting grapes in. Now, I did notice we've got two different types of grape seed, white and red, so maybe we'll do some of each, see how they turn out. I've never uh, never worked with grapes before. I don't know what to expect. But it should be interesting. Now the Van Horns, th those are the folks from the Netherlands who, uh, who came down here to retire. They own all of this. Um, they're not in a great big hurry, obviously. I mean, it's not like this is breaking them necessarily. But like anybody who uses and understands money they understand that if they're going to invest in something it should be returning money back to them so with that said they they are putting a little bit of pressure on to try to uh, get this party started now I don't know if you're aware of this or not but in Italy two big crops are actually corn and wheat now, I didn't know about the corn, but wheat makes absolute sense because, well, pasta was born in Italy and it is a huge staple of the Italian diet. So, um, they grow two types of wheat. They grow hard wheat or durum wheat to make their pasta. And then softer wheat is used for making breads, things like pizza dough, stuff like that. So... We might be able to throw some corn, wheat in this. Now, I did explain to them that I understand that they want um, grapes growing, that they, they would like to get a winery up and running. But 
that can't be their primary focus. Like, they're, they need to diversify so that other profitable aspects of the farm will, will keep the thing up and running without additional funds because there are no more funds. It's just that simple. There's, there's nothing more to spend. So, you know, we've got $100,000. I've got one field of crop that should be harvestable. And that's where we're at. That is where we are at now. Right here on the coastline. A beautiful coastline, don't you think? And for those of you who are curious about where we are in the world, take a look at this. And for those of you who just might be curious about where we are in the world, well, we know we're in Italy and everybody recognizes that traditional Italian boot. If we zoom in to Google Maps, we can see Naples right here, the Gulf of Naples, and just outside of that, we've got Isola di Ischia. This little island right here, this is where we've been called to to set up our vineyards, hopefully get these people out of debt, and prove ourselves as world-renowned farmers. So that's where we are, just off the coast of Naples, on a smallish island. And that's where we're going to be doing our farming. So I think I'm going to cut between these fields. They won't mind if I run through the weeds, right? Right. And this is a wicked truck, so it can pull this hill with no... Well, no. Let's... <laughs> I was just going to try to drive up the side of that, and I probably could have. But... No, I think I will just do this. Now, one thing that goes on here in Italy quite a bit is that people help each other out. There are plenty of jobs available. And we're definitely going to take advantage of that to, to start bringing in some extra money, too. So where we can pick up a contract here and there, that's going to be important to us, I think. In fact, I know it is. So, with all of that said, let's just park up right here. That's funky. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I was a little confused there for a second. Um, let's go grab that Deutz far. The Fent is just a bit much for this particular. If we can, if we can get it out of here. Let's see if it'll sneak out of here. Maybe not. There we go. Yeah, we can get this out of here. That's a decent little tractor. Definitely looks good. That's pretty sweet. So I'm going to hook up to this trailer. And let's take a look. What what are our contracts that are out there right now? That's a healthy bailing contract. That's interesting. We've got a good sewing contract. That mm, no. Potatoes. That might seem like a lot of money, but it's not. Trust me, it's really not. That's a good fertilizing contract. Very good. That would bring in 10 grand. Where's field 37? Oh yeah, that's one of the bigger fields. It's just north of here. You know, maybe we should do that first. I need to look at our garage and see what kind of power requirements we've got. So the Deutz, 
Runs 263. That's not bad. What about this Furtetto? 75. 150 on the Fiat. That might be doable on the Am Amazon. You know, I think that's going to be the ticket. So we're going to get a worker. Grab this Fiat. And I don't think the Fiat is going to do us any good just at the moment because I at least need to move these saplings out of the way. So let me grab our telehandler. This is going to be one of those. Grab every piece of equipment you can find. This is a nice little low rider. This is a sweet little telehandler. I like it. This shouldn't be too hard to move, right? Right. Well, we've got the right connection on the front, so... Strap those up. I wonder if I can just swing them right in here to the corner. Oh yeah, there we go. Perfect. Just like so. There's the Harv we know and love, banging into stuff. Okay, let's grab this Amazon. And I want to grab that contract before we lose it. So we're going to accept that contract. And this will give us a little opportunity to see the rest of the countryside too. Alright. Get that opened up. Get over here and buy some fertilizer. It's not like we're ever going to have too much fertilizer, right? And we already know that fertilizer contracts pay very well. So there'll be a big expense up front. The first contract should pay off the fertilizer for the most part, and then everything after that will just be profit. Or maybe not. This is only half full, and we've already spent 12 grand. Well, it was money that needed to be spent no matter what, so. Woo! Almost 16,000 to fill that. Those are expensive. 16,000 for 8,200 liters. I'm going to have to look into that. Those might just have to go away. Now, the one drawback to this Fiat is it's not exactly lightning fast, is it? Top speed of 15 miles per hour. I mean, it looks good and all, but... Nice to drive. So can we pay off the $2.5 million debt against this farm? That's the challenge. And can we regu regularly start producing grapes the way the Van Horns would like? That's what they really, really want. That's their goal. So the agricultural production side of this has been left to me. They've got another area where they've got their winery set up so we will be delivering grapes there and that's a completely separate venture and the winery will actually be paying us off like they're keeping these businesses separate so we will be producing the grapes 
and then it's up to them to uh, to make wine out of them. But we will sell our grapes to their business. I know it gets all really twisted and complicated when you start thinking about it this way. But there you have it. That's the situation. Okay, we're headed for 37. Oh, that's just here. And I, I took a wrong turn at Albuquerque. Because I need to get down there. So let's see if we can just swing around here. This is one problem when you're in a new place. Figuring out where to go. I wonder... So there's a bit of a cliff right here, but I'm kind of wondering if I can't just sneak down. Hmm. No, it's still too steep. I'd end up rolling this tractor and that would be awful. Well, this just gives us a chance to see more of the Italian countryside, right? Right. Uh, I think this is our road. This leads back to the field we're looking for. Yep, yep, yep. Here we go. Right about there. Okay, we are going to put a worker on this. Because believe it or not. Come on, you got this. You can do it. Really? There we go. Oh, that's not good. Maybe we're not putting a worker on this just because. Um, yeah, course play does not like these two fields being side by side. In fact, it thinks it's one field. So, what do we do in that situation? I guess there's no help for it. We're just going to have to drive it. So. Staying in the tractor is a good thing. At least it's fast. And let's try to get so that we're not fertilizing the weeds, right? Right. I really wanted to put a worker on this because I want to get that sorghum field harvested so we can start prepping it for some grapes, but that is not going to happen today, or at least for a while until I get this done. Okay, that takes care of the contract, no problem, easy as pie. We'll collect our 10 grand. Any others out there that are available and highly lucrative? Yeah, I don't see anything that's um, really going to pay off very well. So let's just get this back to the farm. I'll see you over there because we've got some harvesting to do. Quite a bit of harvesting to do. Okay, I'm just going to. I'm just going to pull this in the middle of the yard. And we need to grab our harvester. There we go. We're going to put plenty of equipment to its, to its paces today. Figure out exactly what this farm is capable of. Or at least our equipment. I've never had any 
occurrence to work with sorghum before, so I'm kind of interested to see. I mean, it wasn't well taken care of, so I'm kind of interested to see exactly how it turns out and if we can make any real money off of it or not. Now, one thing I was talking about earlier, I was talking about the fact that we need to diversify, that we can't put all of our eggs in one grape basket, <laughs> for lack of a better description. But with that said, We don't have the money to do much up front. We Oh, this this is not good. Alright. This is one of the issues with um coming to a new place is getting used to the lay of the land. Anyway, as I was saying, getting used to or um we need to build up some working capital. We gotta make sure that we've got enough. Now, I'm gonna get this one way or another. <laughs> That's all there is to it. I wanted to go this way. I'm going this way. Well, it appears to harvest just like anything else on the planet. Will it give us a straw swath? Um, a lot of straw. Yes, yes it will. So what that tell one thing that we're going to need then is a baler. with a little bit of luck we'll find a way to use the straw find a place to sell it something and this is strange part of this crop is ready to most of this crop is ready to harvest but there's a section up here on what appears to be the top of the hill that's not ready yet that's going to be a little bit of a hassle. I'll just have to come back. In fact, I think I will just cut directly across. That was probably not the best idea. <laughs> Again, just getting the lay of the land. In fact, depending on what this does for us, I, I might not even hassle with it. We might just plow that out and be done with it. We're going to have to see what this field needs once it's harvested. But right now, it looks like this is going to uh, provide quite a bit of sorghum because, well, just that one pass gave us 3,300 liters, and this isn't even fully fertilized, so... It'd be interesting to see exactly how this plays out. Very interesting. So, yeah, a baler and a bale trailer, because it looks like we're going to have a lot of straw. A whole lot of straw. Now once I get a headland on this, I'm going to go get that Duitsvar and the, uh, the trailer. And start running that with the harvester. Because I think we're going to fill up pretty quickly. And this is not exactly a small field. I mean, it's almost 11 acres. But this New Holland, this is uh, just handling this with no problem whatsoever. Not that it would necessarily have a problem, but you know what I mean. It's got plenty of horsepower. When we hit that bigger hill back there, I'm getting off my track here. Um, we hit that bigger hill back there, and it just, just went right up it. So that's good. We kind of went off-roading, too. <laughs> And it still just didn't much bat an eye, so. That is a bonus. 
a big bonus. All right. Try to make our swing here. So we hoof it over that big pile of straw. I might not make the first headland pass by the time I need that trailer to unload. One interesting fun fact about Italy is it is it is home to the highest mountain peak in Europe. Now everybody thinks of the Swiss Alps and all of that but that mountain range runs all the way down into Italy and the highest peak actually is in Italy so that part of the Alps Italy has the claim to fame of the highest mountain peak in Europe I think that'd be one of the fascinating things about living in Europe, actually. It's just, there's so much access to so much history. I mean, everything seems just completely interconnected, you know? And if you're in Italy, you know, it might be a day trip or two or three. You could go as, you know, as far as France or London or, you know, kind of almost anywhere. To, um, you know, and be able to see that part of the world. I mean, even if it was, you know, a week, it's still accessible. And of course, we live in the age of flight, so every place is kind of accessible, but flying, you don't get to see much. And so, if you were driving it, for example, you'd have a much easier time. just being able to check out the sites you know you could plan like a road trip where you stop and see a bunch of different things stuff like that would be awesome just absolutely great germany there's so much history just in europe in general the history is amazing rome was you know rome which is the capital city of of italy was founded in something like 782 BC. 782 before Christ. That's a long freaking time ago. <laughs> a really long freaking time ago. An impressively long time ago. And Italy happens to be home. I believe they're the country that has the most UNESCO World Heritage Sites of any place in the world. In Rome, there's a fountain called the Trello Fountain. And that fountain alone takes in, you know, you know how like wishing wells fountains, you throw money in? That fountain collects over a million dollars a year. And even that's a, if that's a million euros a year, that's even more impressive. It just might be in euros. But a million per year. That's 3,000 a day. And all of it gets donated to charity, which is fantastic. So, yeah, there's lots and lots of great things about Italy. Really going to going to enjoy my stay here, I think. It's going to be a challenge. It's going to be one of those good challenges, though. It's going to be one of those challenges where you say, I really accomplished something here, and I got to see a great place. Just my opinion, but I'm the one doing the work. <laughs> so my opinion's the one that counts. <laughs> uh, 
Nope, that's absolutely not true. <laughs> Funny though, if, if only life could be that simple. It never is. Actually, the only opinions that count are yours. If this ends up being something that you're not enjoying learning about um, viniculture, growing grapes and such, then uh, we'll move on. But for now, I find it pretty darn interesting. It's going to be pretty cool to, uh, I mean, in Dalton Valley, we had a few, a few new interesting crops, but here we've got some that are truly, um, truly unique. You're probably not going to find them on any other map. The one exception is alfalfa. I'm pretty sure we can grow alfalfa here. But I haven't seen grapes other than in like a placeable. But to actually plant grapes and harvest them, no other map has utilized that. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, and with the grapes, there's also almonds that can be planted as trees. And there's one other, and I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. Was it olives? Let's look at the store and see. It's in the pallets. It is olives. So we could plant olive trees. Which wouldn't be out of the question. Although we have that olive orchard, the one that's kind of run down at the moment. We might be able to restore that one. Again, we need to diversify. We need uh, different things to bring bring in revenue streams to bolster the grape production, I think. I'm even thinking animals. I'm not sure on that yet. Now, one other interesting thing about Italy is that Italy always runs an agricultural trade deficit. They import more agricultural products than they export. They have so many people. Apparently in Italy, people live very long lives. And I'm not just, I'm not just making up some BS for you. Um, people have long lifespans and they have high birth rates and so there are a lot of people in Italy packed in very tightly for a small country and so they don't produce enough food to feed everybody and that's why they continually run an agricultural trade deficit I mean what are you going to do feed people on olive oil olive oil and olives are no olive oil actually is one of their primary exports well, you can't just feed people olives. And in fact, in Italy, most olives are converted to olive oil. If you buy olives in the store, most likely they came from Spain. Hey, that was timed just about perfectly. Look at this, our tractor's right here. Outstanding. We're going to get a pretty good haul off of this. So I think at this point, you've probably heard me ramble on enough about Italy. Many, many fun facts for the day. What I'm going to do is throw on some music, speed this puppy up, and see where we land. I'll talk to you in a little bit.
And some of you might have noticed that we've got a new silo. <laughs> well, um, there was a bit of an issue with the silo that came with the map. I was struggling with it and said, you know what? I'm just going to buy one that works for me. So I did. That kind of takes away from the storyline. I apologize. However, it was necessary. I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't. I promise you that. So I think... Unless I'm mistaken, and I don't think I am, we should have around between 60 and 70,000 liters of sorghum. Let's take a look and see. Now, sorghum is going to be this one down here, 66,271. So that's not too bad. We've only got one place, yeah, just one place to sell it. That's going to be at the port, and that price is dropping at the moment. Yeah, right down here so we're gonna hang on to that for a while wait until we see that price stabilize and I think that's gonna do it for this episode of Ischia farm getting our feet wet getting started here in Italy I hope you enjoyed the episode if you did do me a favor remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below and until next time take care <laughs>